Pearls Before Time Learning Podcast. I'm Elise. If you're new to this channel, welcome. It's wonderful to have you. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Um, so today is a beautiful Sunday morning and um, my voice is a bit, yeah, funny today because I've been recovering from a sort of chest cold, um, but I'm okay now. I've just got a bit of the, yeah odd voice things remaining but I'm fine um otherwise I have been really having a nice gentle calm weekend um I watched um the YouTube channel uh, Danish Musings and I think her name is Hella and she filmed the video outside because she was trying to say that like a lot of when it is already moving on and pretending summer is finished and that we're all in autumn mode already and you know we should still try and enjoy the little bit of summer that's left so I took that to heart and then yesterday I sat outside between like little rain showers for like a whole hour and knitted outside and I didn't have any like um external simulation I didn't have any like um audiobooks or podcasts or anything I just sat and listened to the garden and the cats and it was so wonderful and I think you know starting your day like that was just yeah really really lovely um and yeah I am still doing a lot of test knitting to this point I'm not gonna do a sort of um yeah, like I often do have like a theme for my video and then I'll like do like, I don't know, pattern roundups or designer deep dives and stuff. And I think today I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to share what I'm up to because um, I've uh, done quite a lot. I finished an object this week. Unfortunately, it's not the thing I'm testing, which is this. And it's getting so close, but I always forget how slow brioche is sometimes because you're just doing so many rows and you're like, oh one more centimeter or two more centimeters because you obviously having to knit one back and forth is why you knit every stitch once so you like it feels like you're doing twice as much work but it's really close and I'm loving how it's looking I can't wait to share this with you uh, when I'm allowed to but then on top of that I got accepted onto another test knit and that one has a much shorter deadline and it's on tiny needles, but it's for a designer I love. So I am very excited about that. Um, and that is a designer called Teti. Um, I think her surname is Lutzak. Uh, she has a beautiful, beautiful uh, design aesthetic. I have made two patterns by her, no, three patterns by her before. Um, and she sent out a test knit call if you're subscribed to her newsletter and I replied within five minutes because I love all her stuff and it's not a secret test knit so I can share some details it's for a blouse with quite a cool construction it's got like a sort of instead of a it's a raglan but it's got like a u-neck and the proportions of the raglan are kind of not what you'd normally have so instead of having you know longer sections at the front and back and then shorter sleeve sections this is kind of the reverse so you end up with a rectangle where you have these long shoulder sections and short front and backs I don't really have enough I have cast on and started um but I haven't really got enough to show you so much yet because it's so small I've done maybe six rows of the color work uh, I'm doing it in alpaca silk by Sunless Garn because it had to be fingering weight. The whole thing is worked on two and a half and three millimeter needles. So really hoping I can get it done in time. Um, the color work is really engaging. So I tend to race through a color work yoke. And then when I have to get to like a body, it's going to take me a while. And I have experienced that with Tetti's patterns before but obviously I've got a tight deadline so I need to really do this quickly um I was really happy with my color choice and then I was like oh maybe it's a little bit easter but I think it's beautiful anyway the yellow is a little bit more straw yellow than egg duckling yellow it's yeah 
it's going to be a bit eastery, but you know what? It's going to be very pretty and it's got um, these beautiful split hems and split cuffs at the sleeves. The sleeves are sort of elbow length and it's more of a blouse than a sweater and it's just going to be so beautiful and I think this is going to be nice and drapey and gorgeous. So I am so excited to see how this turns out, but I also have to finish this test. So I'm kind of trying to do a little bit on both at the same time. This one is not far from being done, but if you're interested in seeing the kind of work that Tetty does, she is a qualified botanist. So she tries to incorporate like botanical patterns into her color work. She really specializes in very beautiful color work. So I can show you the things I've made by her. So this is my roots and shoots pullover. Um, it is a stranded color work yoke. And I made this in one strand of Newtedon held together with one strand of salt mohair so it's very like light and airy and I can wear this next to my skin it's so soft um, and it's got these lovely little details like corrugated ribbing on the cuffs and on the bottom and I really like this color work pattern I think it's just really really like sweet and beautiful and structured as well um, this is the pattern where I race through the color work yoke and then I got to the body and all of this is on three millimeter needles and this was something I was, I don't know, I just wasn't feeling it. And I think it's also something about if you have the right length of circular, it can go really well. But if you have one that's too long and you're constantly faffing with like pulling a long piece of circular around every round, then it's not so fun anymore. And I think that was the issue with this is my needle sizes my needle cord was too long but I finished this in spring and I wore it out for the first time yesterday on a walk and it was so lovely and cozy and I did some pictures <coughs> yeah so um yeah I love this one and then the other pattern I have by her which is the first pattern I made by Tetty that Made me fall in love with not just her patterns but also with Newtedon. So this is the Between Petals Pullover by Tetty Litzak and I made this in double stranded Newtedon and it is honestly such an elegant sweater. It is really warm. I don't tend to wear this right next to my skin. I tend to have like a camisole underneath. It's a little bit less soft but it's still very soft. I could wear it without that. Um, it's got these beautiful sort of um, uh, balloon sleeves and then a little like contrast uh, crochet detail on the end and also along the bottom. I made, um, oh, the construction of this was so much fun because instead of just, you, there's two different options. So you can either do just a standard top down construction or the other option, which is what I opted for because I thought it was so much fun, is you do a provisional cast on at the base of the yoke and then you work bottom up for the yoke and then you pick up the provisional cast on and then you work the body downwards after you've done the yoke. And I was like, what is this? That's crazy. And it's so lovely. I don't know exactly what the rationale is behind doing that. I think it's the way the direction of the colour work looks with the stitches pointing in different directions. I think that's what it is. Um, so I really like this. I made a bit of a modification on the bottom section of colour work because this motif here actually is kind of a uh, pick up from this bit and it just ended at a point that I didn't really like so I just extended it by a few rows based on the top colour work pattern. Um, but honestly, this is such a cozy, like, autumn, winter, beautiful sweater. I don't remember the names of the colours in New Hidden. I think it's like a collection from three or four years ago. And yeah, it's this kind of greeny, mossy, browny mud, but beautiful foresty mud. <laughs> And this gorgeous bright bright orange and in the leftover yarn for this I don't have them with me right now but 
I tested the pattern for the Between Petal Socks by Tetty. So I do have a matching pair of socks for this, which is super cozy and nice. So these are the kind of style she designs in. So the blouse is gonna be, the color work is very much in reminiscent of this kind of thing. There's a lot of like petally motifs. And yeah, I'll show you how it goes as I progress. Um, but I will show you that this week I finally have a finished object to share. It is something I did in an afternoon, so it's not like a big project, but it is still a little project. And that is this little duckling <laughs> that I made. So a friend of mine had a baby, so um, I don't always make people things for their kids, um, but this is just you know, I really felt like it. So I have wanted to make this pattern for so long. Um, for those of you who don't know the designer, Aftenstrik, which means evening knitting. She is a Norwegian designer and I actually work a lot with her because I am a translator for her. So I've done English translations of most of her patterns, or a lot of her patterns, and which an advantage of that is I actually get to have the patterns for free. So um, this is one that I translated and it's also, it's originally actually a signet pattern for a baby swan. And it's, you can make it in so many different yarns, obviously in gauges because it's a little softy, so it's not so important. Um, I decided that I wanted to make a little duckling instead of a little signet and yeah, it turned out really well. I'm so pleased with it. It's got these little eyes that I stitched on. Um, the original pattern has a slightly bigger halo because I think she uses a, um, either like a fluffy alpaca or a mohair in there, but this is for a very small baby and I think I've read things that they shouldn't have too much fluff around them. So this is just made in a uh, merino wool from Saniscan and it's super wash, which I guess is an advantage for uh, baby things. And I stuffed it with scrap yarn. So if you have little like burps of scrap yarn lying around, this is a really nice way to use them. You just shove them in a little softy. And the legs, little like cute eye cord legs with little feet. And yeah, it's took me one evening after work to make this and I was just delighted with it. She recently came out with a pattern for an adult swan. So you can have signets and an adult swan, like a mama swan, and it's really big. So <laughs> she does a lot of like very, very lovely kids patterns. If you don't know her, please check her out. She, one of my favorite collaborations with her is she did a collaboration with Rauma Garn, which is a Norwegian yarn company and they did an Easter collection, and it is honestly, to this day, one of my favorite collections. It has knitted like little bunny ears that you can put on kids, and um, knitted eggs, and knitted baskets for eggs, and little, like one of my favorite ones that I've made is a felted little bag that looks like a little bunny rabbit with his two little ears. It is so darling. I love it so much. Um, it's just a very, very sweet collection. And yeah, I really, really admire her work. So she does a lot of very cute kids things and this is one of them. So I'll send this off soon in the post. Um, so yeah, if you want a quick, good kids present that doesn't take too much effort, or time, or you don't, like with clothes, I feel like we'll grow out of them in no time. So I think these are a really nice option. Um, otherwise, in between all the testing and everything, I have made ooh, a bit of progress on my ranunculus, which I've shown before. So I have, I have finished one little sleeve. Um, this is a bit of a sleeve modification to the original pattern. So there is a short sleeve option that's more of a sort of cap sleeve where you do short rows and stuff. And I didn't really want that. I wanted to kind of more of a straight t-shirt sleeve. So I actually followed the pattern for the long sleeve version. 
and then instead of making a long sleeve I just did 10 rows of stockinette and then four or five rows of rib and that's what I ended up with there. Um, the reason I'm doing sleeves before I finish the body is because I'm limited on yarn. So I, this is yarn that I was kindly gifted um, by my partner and he gave me four 25 gram balls of Tilia. And so um, I, so the main yoke in the body up to this point took like, this is on three and a half skeins three two and a half skeins and then I thought okay I'll start the fourth skein I'll knit the sleeves with that and then with whatever's left I'll just knit length and body because at the moment it's pretty cropped and I was a bit worried about it being too short so um I just thought I'll make some short little sleeves and then I'll know how much yarn I have left and I can just keep going to live run out of yarn so that is the plan with this it is looking so gorgeous I can't wait for this to be finished. It shouldn't take long. It's just I had a lot of other things going on on my needles. Um, so yeah, that is kind of most of my knitting stuff. Um, I've had a pretty stressful week at work and the next couple of weeks are going to be quite stressful. Um, you know, every now and then there's like you know, a bigger assignment um, and you know, that's what I'm dealing with right now and I'm very good at normally compartmentalizing work is work and home is home but the last couple of days I've been a bit more like Ugh. so um yeah I think the next couple of weeks at work are going to be a little bit tough but that's okay um it's not super crazy I remember like the feelings I was getting about this were very similar to the feelings I had for like two years every day when I was doing my PhD and I was like oh I can handle this for two weeks because I know it's going to have an end it's just working towards a big um not an exam but like a sort of thing so um it's kind of like an exam but it's not so yeah once that's over we've got a date for that and it's a limited amount of time that I can I'm going to be like this stressful so that's nice it's not going to last too much longer um, and it's a team effort, so it's not just on me, but, you know, I have, you know, to do my bit. Um, so, yeah, that's a little thing in the background. Um, but I've been also trying to um, compensate for that by also doing more physical exercise. So this week I, instead of taking the train home, I ran home uh, on... I can't remember what day it was but on one of the days and what's really nice is I get to run along the coast and there's like some foresty patches and at one point I was just running and suddenly I saw this little like thing scuttle across the path and it was a little mouse it was like this tiny little I don't know if it was a dormouse or a field mouse but it was so so cute I filmed it as well it just was I think it was a baby it was so tiny um, yes, yeah, so I filmed it and yeah, I put it up on my Instagram, but it was really, really nice. Um, and then next weekend, I've also, um, I won't be able to film because I'll be away Friday to Sunday. So we'll see how I'm feeling Sunday uh, afternoon. If I feel like filming, I might not, I might just need to rest. Um, uh, that's also with a work thing, but it's not a like a uh, work thing. It's more like a social work thing. So that's going to be really fun. I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, so I've got lots to look forward to and lots to do. Um, I think when I get stressed, I knit more because I need that sense of control. <laughs> um, so the real reason I started knitting was because I found my PhD incredibly stressful and I needed something else to turn my brain off. And yeah, so what year was it? Like 2021? My output was insane. I think I finished 30 or so finished projects for the year. A whole ton of them were sweaters. It was a lot. Um, and there was also a pandemic, so I was stuck at home a lot of the time. So yeah, it was... Uh, so what the more stressed I am, I guess the higher my knitting output. My knitting output is nowhere near as high anymore. Um, but yeah, I am having a lovely time with all my tests and all my 
whoops so I hope you're also really enjoying yourself um with your projects um over the next yeah few weeks and yeah have a wonderful time until I see you again bye